Yeah. Okay, so I'm making vegan mac and cheese. I'm using this stuff, I'll show it to you in a second. It's, uh, oh, I've ripped the cover up, but uh... Hello, I've just realised, oh, I'm wearing my hat inside. It's actually to keep my hair out of my face. <laughs> anyway, I've just realised that I forgot to film an intro to this vlog, so hello, I am Dane, you probably know that already, and welcome to this week's reading vlog. I'm still cracking on with A Dead Simple by Peter James, I'm getting on for two thirds of the way through, and then up next I think I might read a couple of graphic novels before then, uh, because I'm going away this weekend, I'm going to uh, to a place near Hay on Y. no sorry, near Ross on Y. Uh, which actually, weirdly, I went there back in January, I'll link my vlog of when I went there with my mum, I guess. Um, but yeah, so um, so I'm going there this weekend and that means I'll get a lot of reading done as well while, while travelling. So um, I'm currently working my way through like the books. I, I did uh, my cat picks, my TBR. So that's why I'm on Dead Simple. And then up next, I have uh, Strange Weather by Joe Hill. So yeah, all right, catch you in a bit. So I made curry versed uh, with homemade sauce. These are homemade sausages as well, uh, se uh, seitan and tofu made these fries in the air fryer. I've been making some of these, so well I made another one of these sausages and then I also made some burgers and some like kebab strips for when we go and have this uh, barbecue. Lovely. My uh, fake meat is ready and I have arranged it into a smile. Beautiful. Welcome to the shepherd's hut. Little fire there. Some chairs, very nice. Kettle. Light switch that doesn't work because reasons. Ooh, there's the little thingy. <laughs> but now this like time she's fine. She's like, like a new so, so, uh, so like, well, like you can hear it. Uh, but well, she's not going to be doing it. Hi, swans. No, don't leave me. Some goats. They're sheep. Oh yeah, they're sheep. Have you, have you seen when they like have their young and they, they put them under a wing yeah. and they're like on their backs? Fucking ramrod straight. Where's Hannah? Do you like the yoga? Probably the bubbles inside. <laughs> we should send some smoke signals. Um, do you want to join? Actually, head, head, headband. Ooh. I've got like a GB sticker, but I don't have any L plates in my car. <laughs> What's that about? Why do they have L plates? They're like... Uh, from back in the day when, you know, your wedding night might have been your first time. Oh, can you imagine? Whatever you have yeah. in, whatever you have Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Amy, you asked about our yeah. itinerary. Yeah. So, uh, on yeah. Wednesday oh, when we drive... When you're going down that street, it's like a dark little alley now. Yeah. Whereas before, it was like an open, you know, you could see the water and the buildings on the other side. Oh. Uh, do you want a club? I can Oh. <laughs> yeah, okay. This is amazing. It's very frustrating watching. Every boss doesn't want to look like a bad one. It takes like four times, six times as long to find out the truth and you know, get actual help. Like, you're like a bit, yeah. I'm probably yeah, actually, hiding I might, it. Yes, I, I think do, I heard they were like hiding it from the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, US. Yeah. 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 Nothing happened here. There's a moment in the 
Oh my god, Shane. Shane. Yeah, you... So we went canoeing and I do not like water and I have been canoeing once and didn't like it but I was like 14 so I was like I'm gonna give it another go and I didn't like it so uh, so I'm, I'm off to meet everybody at the pub they're canoeing along and I'm walking through the Welsh countryside and trying not to get hit by vehicles nice though a good day for it. Look at that, look at that shit. Well nice. Where are we at? What's this? Vention Lane. Royal Spring Inn. All right, let's find out where I am. This is proper discover of body territory, isn't it? Jesus, almost fell. Public footpath. Nice. Barbed wire as though you're not supposed to go in it. Where's it go? Leading me into the middle of fucking nowhere. I'm in foliage. Stingers, watch out for the stingers. Oh my lord. Ah, uh, I'm so busy watching my footing here that I'm not checking the map. <laughs> Holy fuck. All right, here we go. Good to check the map. Fuck me, I made it out of Narnia. I don't trust these public footpaths after that. I, don't, I think it's meant to be a cat. Or maybe Pikachu. Uh, I need to go to Simmons Yacht West. So this could be interesting. So. I'm not sure. Oh, there's a footpath. So we went under this bridge, I think. Castle, which we can see from the campsite. It's a bit nice, isn't it? Castle in the background. Look at the zoom. There it is. Those rolling fields. Look at bright as well. A nice day. Yeah, same to you, buddy. Right. It's alright, I can't come in anyway, it's private property in it. Be very cute. Uh. Alright, two miles to Simmons Yacht West. Look at them hills. The dragons in them. And cows. Bless you. Oh that was perfect timing. Concentration. Oh, I 
Well, we have finished camping. Bex has got the plague, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. I uh, got a lovely coffee. Thank you very much for my coffee. And we're, we're on the train to Tamworth. So if we fall asleep, we can drop by my mum. I've got uh, Strange Weather by Joe Hill. What are, what are you reading, my love? Death on the Nile. Oh, Death on the Nile by Agatha Christie. <laughs> yeah, the, the facsimile edition. Where's your uh, dust jacket for it? I didn't want it to get ruined. You didn't want it to get ruined? Well, that seems fair enough to me. There we go. This looks to me, I bet there's a thing at the end of that that's got a note on the type that tells you about... Maybe there is a note. We have stopped at the jam factory, haven't we? Yeah. We're sitting outside in Oxford. We made it back to Oxford. And now you get to go home. And I, I have to, <laughs> yeah, you get to go home and fall asleep while I'm still traveling. But uh, yeah, very nice, very nice. Yeah. By experts to fight in pairs to the death. Obviously, you won't be required to fight to the death here. So I'm watching Spartacus. Well, Biggie's watching as well, aren't you, Biggs? Yeah, he's like, oh, I didn't expect you to talk about me all of a sudden. Yes. Uh, I'm going to do some filming this evening, so um, yeah, I'm going to update you on my vlog. I know I've got a little thing on my face, don't worry about it. Uh, got back from glamping, so I'll give you an update on that, tell you about some of the books I've been reading, and then we'll uh, round this, this vlog off. But I also want to do some other filming this evening, so uh, uh, yeah, my cat picks my TBR wrap up, because I've finished doing that. I've got a film, uh, actually I haven't finished doing that because I have to finish reading this book here, which I'm very nearly finished reading, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. Uh, yeah, got to film my update to my vlog. I'm going to do the next part of my wrap up. I've got a little bit of a haul to do. And uh, also, I think I'm going to do like reacting to some of my old photos. So we'll see. Um, and I quickly wanted to just let you know as well, I'm, I'm going to unhaul this uh, Running From The Deity by Alan Dean Foster. Um, just because, basically I want to read some more Alan Dean Foster and I picked up Alien. So I'm like, well I'd much rather read that than Pip and Flink's Adventure number 11. So that's what we're doing there. All right, cool. Who are you up to, Biggs? He wants to go outside but the neighbors are outside and he's a shy cat. Uh, I am making this uh, spinach and tofu uh, curry. I sent a photo to Bex and she, she replied saying, it looks like a pool of stagnant water. Very nice. Okay, so I am apparently an hour and 40 minutes in with an hour and 35 minutes to go, so about halfway. I have some books to update you on. I have a lot of books to update you on. So the plan is I'm gonna talk about these and then we're gonna round off uh, this video. So in no particular order, we'll go with uh, Nikolai Leskov, The Steel Flea. So this is Penguin Little Black Classic number 40. An uproarious romp of one-upmanship and drunkenness from the 19th century Russian comic genius. Now, I think there's quite a lot of this that maybe kind of went in one ear and out the other or whatever the reading equivalent of that is uh, but I mean I did enjoy the story it's basically um, I think the Brits send the Russians this little microscopic flea and then the Russians end up putting shoes on the flea and sending it back and that's about all I remember from this it was well written but I just don't think like interest wise for me it didn't compare to most of the other books in the box set I still gave it a 3.5 out of 5 though I just I don't know at this point whether I'd read any more Nikolai Leskov. I mean, I would, I guess, if I came across him for some other reason. But I, I wouldn't go out of my way to look for some. Let's try leaning back. That's better. Okay, then we have The Witch's Vacuum Cleaner by Terry Pratchett. So this is a collection of short stories, and it's similar to uh, Dragons at Crumbling Castle, which I read fairly recently. They're all stories that he wrote when he was a reporter for the Books Free Press, which is actually my local newspaper, their head office is about three miles away and basically he used to write these sort of short fantasy stories. They're not necessarily related to the disc world um, but they do kind of act as a bit of a forerunner to it. There's some really good stuff, there was some a, a great one in here, uh, well a great series actually set in the wild west of Britain which is Wales and instead of having cowboys they had sheep boys and like there was a character called Di Evans and all this stuff. Uh, the main story about the witch's vacuum cleaner was quite funny as well. I'll read you the blurb because why not? Do you believe in magic? Can you imagine a war between wizards, a submarine the size of a walnut, or a time-travelling television? Can you imagine that poor old Mr. Swimble could see a mysterious vacuum cleaner in the morning and make cheese sandwiches and yellow elephants magically appear by the afternoon? Welcome to the wonderful world of Sir Terry Pratchett and 14 fantastically funny tales from the master storyteller. Bursting from these pages are food fights, pirates, bouncing rabbits, and magical pigeons. 
and a witch riding a vacuum cleaner, of course. So yeah, I did enjoy it. I gave it a pretty solid four out of five. Uh, but even so, with that said, it's probably in his bottom 50% of books, just because his books are so good. That said, it is a pretty decent introduction to him, especially if you don't want to start with the Discworld and you just want to get a feel for his writing style. It's also pretty good if you're a parent reading to children as well and you could do one story a night. And also it's quite cool how uh, like they use different kind of visual styles. So you can see here it says uh, full up. We can't see here because it's blurry. Anyway, so for example, it's got the word full up uh, and it's slightly bigger than the surrounding text. It's got these illustrations by someone called Mark Beach, who is very clearly a fan of Quentin Blake because they look exactly like Quentin Blake. All in all, yeah, four out of five. Here we have A Simple Heart by Gustave Flaubert, number 45. Flaubert's most famous short work meditates on the unexamined, futile life of a servant and her beloved parrot. And I think that kind of gives you a hint towards where it's going. It's very much a character study, but the character isn't particularly interesting, and that's the point. She's just a very typical kind of maidservant of her age, but actually he does a pretty good job of giving her a voice, I think. Um, I don't know, I'm sure it probably would have been done better if a woman had written it, to be honest, but uh, yeah, I think the whole point of the story was to investigate, you know, this, this female character's life, and uh, it was very sort of humdrum, very s sort of everyday, but at the same time, the actual setting of it and the character herself made it quite interesting. I still couldn't give it anything more than like a 3.5 out of 5 though. But yeah, worth checking out. Alright, I also read Dead Simple by Peter James. This is the first Roy Grace book. And this was for my uh, latest My Cat Picks My TBR video. And I did really enjoy this actually. I said in one of my previous reviews for the third book in this series that you can tell that he gets better and better as time goes on. So I went into this not expecting too much because it was the first one thinking, you know, he'll have got way better since then. But actually it was really impressive for the first book in a series. And basically the plot of this revolves around uh, a stag, not, a stag night prank gone wrong. So the, the groom to be gets buried alive. Then his four sort of the people, four people who buried him there are killed in a car crash, but there's some sort of more stuff going on as well. And then about, a third of the way from the end, another twist comes along that I totally didn't see coming. That's a very like Gillian Flynn style uh, twist, I thought. And uh, and also, actually, when that happens, uh, it's it's like a reference to Stephen King's Misery as well, which I thought was quite cool. This is also, I think, published in 2005, so it's like before the smoking ban, and like somebody's using a phone with like the clunky buttons instead of a digital keypad. So it's interesting to see how the series has evolved since then, and he's kind of still maintained you know using the latest technology throughout the series for the for the police and whatnot so i thought that was pretty cool i gave it a pretty solid four out of five and i did enjoy it so thank you biggie for picking it then we have the adventures of john blake by philip pullman mystery of the ghost ship art by fred fordham so uh it's kind of hard for me to show, hold this up for you to look at the art. But basically, this is like about a sort of time-traveling pirate ship. My uh, my girlfriend got this for me because we're both fans of Philip, Philip Pullman, basically, and she didn't know it existed. I didn't know it existed either, and I think it might even be like the first in a series, which is quite cool. So I'll probably be checking these out more. I kind of went into it wanting to love it, and for the first 20 pages, I was like, oh my god, I'm not sure I'm going to like this. I'm not really getting on with it. And then it got really good. And then maybe the ending, the ending was a little bit... Not even anticlimactic, but overblown, almost a little cartoonish, which I suppose it's supposed to be. I mean, it's also kind of superhero-y, which I don't normally like, but it's not over the top. And, it, and it's more it's more like a Batman kind of superhero where his superpower is his gadgets, which in this case is a time-traveling pirate ship. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I'll read you the blurb. An adventure on the high seas from master storyteller Philip Pullman. Far out at sea, hidden in the mists of time, sail the Mary Alice and her crew. But the mysterious ship is being hunted by a villain who will go to any lengths to track her down. Join John Blake and his shipmates on an unforgettable time-travelling adventure on the high seas. I gave it a 4 out of 5. It's pretty good. And then, we have Nosferatu by Joe Hill, which I believe I talked about a lot either earlier in this vlog... In fact, I think I've already reviewed this. I'm not going to go into it again anyway, because I'm also going to talk about it in my Cat Picks My TBR video. Uh, and speaking of which as well, then the final book for that is this, which is basically what I'm currently reading, but I'm reading the afterword now, so I feel qualified to review it. Uh, this is Strange Weather by Joe Hill. I didn't realise until picking it up that it's four different uh, novellas rather than one novel, but that was fine by me. So we had, and I'll let you know what I thought of each of them. We have Snapshot, which I don't really remember, but I do remember it reminded me of, uh, I think it's called The Sun Dog by Stephen King, Joe Hill's dad, in that it kind of follows on these weird 
Polaroid photos and a man who takes them. Uh, by the way, I should point out all these are tied together by strange weather as well as you know as the title suggests. So in this one you get like a rain of birds. Uh, we have Loaded, which I thought was the best one, and uh, that one the weather is fire. There's like a natural fire going on, and basically this security guard is working at a mall and uh, he's been served like a restraining order against his wife and like he's not allowed to see his kid. And then uh, there's like an attack at the mall and we kind of see the backstory to that as well. And he sort of goes a bit nuts and everything goes a bit wrong from there. And uh, I, I, it has one of the bleakest endings I've ever come across. The only ending I can think of that's bleaker than this is the ending to the movie of The Mist. Which funnily enough is based on a Stephen King novella. But I think the ending is different in the novella. I don't know. I haven't got to read it yet. But I do want to. Uh, then we have a loft, which is basically about a man who goes skydiving. And he ends up landing on a cloud. And uh, that's exactly how it sounds. There's also a brutal moment when, the, like, because he's, he's diving with his partner, and he basically lands on his partner on this cloud, and his partner gets a bit smashed up, you know. Uh, but yeah, then we kind of investigate what this cloud is by looking at like the backstory he has with uh, this band he used to be in. Uh, it was all right. I didn't really connect with the characters or the story too much, but um, yeah, it was it was okay. And then we have rain, and in rain, basically from the sky it's raining like bolts of metal like some of them like the size of carrots so obviously if you're outside you're screwed and um yeah and then it kind of, kind of goes a bit post-apocalyptic after that and investigating how people cope in this rain so yeah that's me all up to date with my books next up i'm going to read this the graphic novel of small gods by terry pratchett i want to really quickly as well just kind of recap what happened over the weekend so over the weekend i went to it was a place called tp adventure in ross on wye uh, i actually went there not far back with my mum so i'll link below if i can find it to the previous vlog where i was also in ross on wye um so it's actually the third time i've been there in about three years now but uh, this was glamping, so I stayed with Bex in a shepherd's hut, and then the rest of them, about seven of us, uh, the, uh, seven others, they were all inside a teepee. Uh, we travelled along there from Oxford. The first day we had a barbecue, so I had a vegan barbecue while you know they they did their thing. We had a few beers and just chilled. Uh, then on the Sunday we went canoeing, which I absolutely hated. I basically like I just I didn't like it. I got motion sickness. I didn't think I was going to like it because I don't like water as well. Um, so yeah, so I did like half of that and then basically when we stopped, I just felt, so, I just did not want to get back in that boat. So um, so I walked to the finish point instead, which is about seven miles, which is quite a nice walk through the countryside. Uh, yeah, I also wrote a song on a ukulele. Then in the evening, that evening, we played some Magic the Gathering, had some vegan chili, just chilled, played some Cards Against Humanity and uh, yeah. And then we travel back on the Monday, on the bank holiday Monday, which was yesterday. Now it's the Tuesday. I've been working uh, and I'm pretty much going to go back to that. I'm going to actually go and serve up my food now. Uh, but on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.